Hey Shogi fans, this game is played by Yoshiharu Habu and Koji Tanigawa as the second game of the ninth term duo title match. Tanigawa is the 17th Eternal Meijin, and in this game you can see Tanigawa's brilliant night drop. It's bishop exchange opening. Well, bishop exchange opening is a very complicated strategy. You have to be always careful about your opponent's bishop drop in your camp. So bishop exchange strategies are rather for advanced players. It's pretty difficult for beginners to play bishop exchange because it's hard to make sure there's no fatal bishop drop from your opponent. So actually, I don't like playing bishop exchange myself. Now this looks like an ordinary bishop exchange strategy where Sente is going to play reclining silver where he advances his silver to 5f and Gote is using climbing silver. But Sente's strategy is not reclining silver. It's ranging rook. We often call this Bishop exchanged ranging rook. This is a very interesting and exciting strategy. So Tanigawa's silver goes back. Oh, now Habu started to castle his king. Now it seems Habu has made a decision and suddenly dropped a bishop. Taniga goes rook 6b, so Senti can promote it to 8c. But Tanigawa has a good countermeasure for this. Bishop 9b, he has no choice but to take it, so the horse is disappeared. Habu discards this pawn, and Silver takes the pawn. Gote goes for the knight. At this position, Tanigawa made a pretty good pawn drop. It's pawn 5e. If you take it, bishop 3g will be a powerful attack. So Habu had no way but to take it with the silver. So the silver had to go back. Now he goes for the vital point of Yagura. A very good bishop drop. It aims many squares. And pawn 7e. If you take it, there will be this threat of knight drop here. So this bishop can't get away from this diagonal. So Habu won't take this pawn and goes bishop 8a promote. Tanigawa tries to exchange the rooks, but Habu doesn't want to do that, so he goes horse 6c. Now taking it won't be very good. Tanigawa has no effective attack here. So he dropped a bishop and rook 6i. So Tanigawa managed to make this between move bishop 5i and rook 6i. Now, how about taking the horse here? Well, now it's better for Tanigawa 
than the situation I've shown because there is a bishop here so it makes a difference however even in this position Habu is still good because this dragon is defending the king so Tanigawa can't destroy this defense even though he has a bishop here so what should Tanigawa do here? you see this position is a very complicated situation the pawn is attacking the silver rooks attacking the bishop and the horse attacking the rook many attacking pieces actually this is the position where Tanigawa made an awesome attack one thing you might be able to think of is dropping the pawn to here and rooks takes the bishop takes the horse but well in this case this pawn is in rook's way and it's interfering with rook's attack so this pawn has become a rather too heavy attack so what do you think Tanigawa's next move is? well it's knight 7g now he made the situation even more complicated when it's already too complicated well it's simply attacking this knight and the rook but well you can take it for free right? now what happens? well if he takes it now Tanigawa would take the horse and takes the silver now in this case Tanigawa can continue to make effective attacks because you see the pawn is already attacking the knight for example he can make this attack So Tanigo has managed to gain attacking speed by sacrificing the knight here. Well, we can easily think of doing it with a striking pawn here or even a lance. But it's hard to think of doing it with a knight. So if Habu takes this knight, it means he allowed Tanigawa to make these two between moves and then take the horse so it's even emotionally unacceptable for Habu to allow these moves so Habu's move here was rook 5i and rook takes the horse and bishop 5d well now you notice something well this is similar to the position I've showed right here so the difference in these two positions whether a pawn is here or a knight is here and in this case the rook is aiming directly at Habu's camp so Tanigawa can make an effective attack here bishop 6h and now he takes the knight and takes the silver well look at this situation he managed to remove the knight here which was defending this square and these pawn and the bishop are attacking here it's like we're seeing some kind of magic here if you take the rook well this is a threat mate so he took the bishop but well yeah a threat mate starting with rook 8h so Habu dropped a rook he's defending this gold and avoiding the threat mate rook 8h and here I think Tanigawa has a good move here which he didn't play you know what that is you see this rook is defending this gold so a good move here would be blocking the rook by a knight drop 
Well, there's a good reason for that. It has to be the knight, not the pawn. You'll see the reason. Now it's a threat mate. So how does he defend this? Well, it would be nothing but pawn 8h. Now here, Gote can make a brink mate here. You see it? It's pawn 6g. This is why I didn't use the pawn here. But Tanigawa didn't do this. Although the rook is defending this gold, Tanigawa went ahead and took the gold and cleared off all the pieces. Well, he's winning this game anyway. So I think it's just he chose the simplest way. And knight 6c. And Habu resigned here. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.